But I tell you, my lord fool, out of this nettle, danger, we pluck this flower, safety. My wife, Catherine Mansfield, responded more completely to life than any writer I have ever known. Why do you call your magazine Rhythm? Mm, wig! Your desk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Shut! If you don't even hang with yourself, you're so inert! Here. Here's the nearest I can get to home, to New Zealand. <laughs> It does help my rheumatiz. I've hardly complained once this last week. Well, perhaps you're not going to die of heart failure, after all. <laughs> she died of tuberculosis on January the 9th, 1923, at the age of 34, and was buried at Avon in Fontainebleau, near Paris. Now, it is not for me to pass judgment on the Gurdjieff Institute, which she had entered shortly before her death, but I am persuaded that Catherine made of it an instrument for that process of self-annihilation which is necessary for the spiritual rebirth whereby we enter the kingdom of love. More I dare not, and less I must not say. <laughs> Leslie. Oh, yeah. Couldn't you get a cab at the station? I wanted to walk. But you surely could have left your case. Here, let me take... It's not heavy. And I'm here now. When did you get my telegram? This morning. I caught the afternoon train from Lucia. Catherine. She wouldn't have wanted her coffin to look so, so cold and so... Naked? Yes. Yes, Jack. Trust me not to be able to find the right word. activities of life. Monsieur Gurdjieff teaches us that it is our, how do you say, separation. It is like a divorce, yes, from the real meaning of life that makes us estranged with ourselves and other peoples. That is why we have tried to make even this cow barn beautiful. Oh, oh it is. Katerina loved it so much to be here. She loved the cows. Already we are calling them Mrs. Murray's cows. <laughs> you do like it, Mr. Murray? Uh, very much indeed, but you know, I do think we ought to be getting over to the hotel. I did say half past seven for dinner. And they have come all this way in honor of Katerina. <laughs> What did Mansfield really expect to get out of good chief? Well, having come to believe that her illness was as much spiritual as physical, but she naturally... Jack, communing with cows, surely that's the very last thing uh, someone with TB ought to... I agree. Possibly, but I can't. Sincerely, I, I don't blame the Institute for her death. No, no, no of course one You doesn't. see, Gurdjieff does have three qualified doctors there. Ah, oh, yes, but Jack, any uh, doctor attached to the Institute... Catherine 
wanted to be rooted in life. The Institute's philosophy of communal physical simplicity leading to spiritual regeneration. Oh, yes. Russian Mother Earthism, nothing more or less. <laughs> what does it matter? It worked for Catherine. You believe that? Certainly I do. And then why, pray, are we here? For her funeral. Please. One can lose one's life to save it, surely. Is there any more wine in that bottle, please? Yeah. Merci. Well, at, at least her place in literature is assured. Yes, indeed. Of course, sometimes it's an advantage for a writer to die young. Mm -hmm. If only oh. Wordsworth had, think what agonies we'd have been oh. spared. <laughs> and if only Keats had lived, what glories we would have been given. Yes, do you think Mansfield would have had more to tell us, Murray? Yes, certainly I do. But you worked on so tiny a scale, just mm. jeweled incidents, really. Scale doesn't matter. Vast or minuscule, either way, is no guarantee of anything. Vision is the only I criterion. Agree. And then Mansfield I'm sorry, but Why? I just don't Can't. think we should be talking like this. I mean, it would be all right if she were here, but she's not, is she? Is she? Leslie, Catherine's work is a separate, discussable entity. Is it? I, I don't know. I, I don't think she wanted it to be. I'm sorry. But why have you come from London if all you can do is attack her? But that's there was simply a setting. Well, whatever it is you're doing, she's not here to defend herself. And I... It's too soon. Too soon. It's only me, darling. You won't think I'm fussing, will you? Darling. Violets, fresh violets. They look a little dead, really. Fresh this morning. Thank you. Fresh violets, fresh violets, preps a bunch, preps a bunch, preps a bunch, sir. It imaginatively, see it, smell it, breathe it if you can. Hmm. Isn't it just the sort of cake that might have been mentioned in the book of Genesis? And God said, Let there be cake, and there was cake. <laughs> and, and God saw that it was good. <laughs> Oh. No, um, tasted. It was good. Mm -hmm. It is. He was right. <laughs> so good. Did you make it? The corner shop. Yeah, it's a queer thing. But I always do notice what I eat when I come here. Whereas anyone else, I don't. I simply don't. I suppose it comes from living alone and always reading. I always have to have a book while I 
Oh. <laughs> Pardon myself. Food is just food. Something to be devoured, to be made not there. Does that shock you? To my bones. But when I come here to tea, I do notice. It's strange. By myself, I have no external life at all. I don't know the names of things a bit. Trees and so on. I mean, you always know the names of trees. I never noticed what furniture and places or what people looked like. Not in the way you do. One room is just like another to me. A place to sit, read or write or talk in. Except, except here. Here in, in this studio. And you know, here, here's another queer thing. When I am away from this room, I visit it in spirit. And you, I wander among your things. You never seem to object. Mm -hmm. I stared at this bowl of fruit on the table. <laughs> You're never without fruit, are you? Uh -huh. oh. And I touch this, oh. this marvel of a sleeping boy's head. It's odd. I love that little boy. Yes, you told me. So odd by never knowing the names of things except here. Yes, it is, especially when you're going to be, I know you will be, England's greatest living novelist. <sighs> I mean, just think of the plays that you're going to write. No one, but no one has your exquisite sense of real English comedy. What I treasure so much about our relationship is its sincerity. Yes. Yes. And when I think how our minds, our minds, They're like two open cities laid open to each other. Oh, yes. And it isn't as if you come riding into mine like a conqueror armed at the eyebrows, <laughs> it? Oh, good heavens, no. <laughs> I mean, nor do you enter mine like a queen walking soft on petals. Oh, I'd let you. You could. No, no you... we're up. <laughs> uh, no. Mm, we are serious travelers. Yes. Yes. The best of it is that we're both old enough, I and mean, mature enough, to enjoy our adventure without any stupid emotional complications, aren't we? Oh, certainly. I think that side of things is quite over and done with, don't you? Yes. I know that all my energy must be devoted toward my writing. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. So must mine. I mean, if one's to achieve anything. Exactly. It's an essential self-discipline. Quite. I ought to poke up that fire. I wonder, would you mind if I were... to smoke my pipe? <laughs> you know I wouldn't. <laughs>
The question is, has psychology, qua psychology, got anything to do at all with literature today? I love you. How precisely do you mean? I love you. I mean, do you think the novel of the future will be a psychological novel or not? Why can't you speak? Do you mean that you think the young writers of today, those mysterious, non-existent creatures, <laughs> are merely trying to jump the psychoanalyst's claim? Surely you, so perceptive, can see my need? Yes, I do. I think they are trying to be psychoanalysts. But I think this generation is just wise enough to know that it is sick. Uh, and that its only means of recovery is to go back to its symptoms. Mm. To make an exhaustive study of them, to try, I mean, we must. To track down, as it were. To reach the root of the trouble. But what a dismal outlook. It's for writing, that is. No. Oh, no, it needn't be. Well, we could... We could... Gosh, six already. I'm... I'm meeting my publisher at six. Oh, are you? Oh, my dear. Oh, what have they been talking about? I don't know. The cake was delicious. Oh, I must be off then. Oh, yes, you must. We should put your hat by the fire. It's still damp. Oh, no. There's no need to do that at all. It might have shrunk it. You think of everything. Well, I must be going, then. Yes. Ah! Not in here! Are you superstitious? Dreadfully. Ah. You must rouge if you want to get to Bloomsbury in time. Yes. They promised me in advance. You deserve it. Yes. It means that I'll be able to immerse myself in my work utterly. Such a liberation for you. Uh, yes. I must go. Yes. How oh, you've hurt me. We failed. Go. Why didn't you insist that I stay? Don't go. I could easily have telephoned. Easily. He'll never come back. He'll be immersed in his normal. How stupid! How stupid! He's realized. Oh, good dog. Oh, it's 
send me. Oh. Do send me away if it's not convenient. It's not. I'm sorry. I can't. I've, I've got someone with me. We're, we're discussing his latest novel. It's terribly concentrated work. I shall be hopelessly busy all evening. It doesn't matter. Not at all, darling. I was just passing, and I thought I'd leave you some violets. I've kept them out of the rain. They look rather... You know. But they were fresh this morning, the woman said. Oh, my dear. You shouldn't have. They're nothing. Just the simplest little threatening bunch. As a token. My friend. My perfect friend. Then you don't mind me too much. Sure, you mustn't mind what I ever say. Come again, dear friend. Come again. Soon. May I? Of course. Good night. Good night, darling. She'd want all her things to go back with you to England. I can't take them all. You'll have to cope, Leslie. Why do they always compare her with Chekhov, this imbecile here? But Catherine did admire Chekhov. I know, Leslie, but they positively seize on the TB connection. I thought the Times obituary was very nice. Nice. Oh, Leslie, no wonder you drove Catherine quite mad. I didn't. <laughs> How can you? I didn't. I did everything I could to help. You weren't there, were you? She couldn't count on you. All the years she was ill. Could she? You don't understand my work kept me in London. She wrote and wrote to you. Hardly a day went by, wherever we were, that she gave me a letter to post to you. And I replied. But never so much. Catherine understood. Not always. Have you kept her letters? Every single one. They're superb. 
I shall keep her watch for myself. Do. It's still going. What shall we do with her brother's photograph? Tell me. Leslie, please. I, I can't. You ought to dress. It's nearly time. Reste avec nous à l'heure où nous parviendrons un jour peut-être sans le savoir au terme de notre vie, car tu peux seul éclairer pour nous la fin de notre route. Ne nous abandonne pas en face du mystère de la mort, ne nous laisse pas seuls. Reste avec nous, Seigneur. Jack, I think they're waiting for you. For what? I, I don't... You ought to have something to put in. A token. Well, I haven't. Don't touch me. The shawl. No, no. No, I have to give this to someone. She told me. Your marigolds. Oh, yes. Yes, she liked. moment où nous rendons à la terre ce qui est poussière, nous affirmons notre foi en la vie éternelle. Celui qui croit en moi vivra quand même il serait mort et vieille du Christ. Et quiconque vit et croit en moi ne mourra jamais. Where's yours, Laurie? Need to brush it against the net. She won't be a minute. She's been telling the men where to put the marquee. Who is it, May? Oh, Kitty. She wants to speak to Laura. I don't fancy it. Now, with a thing like a marquee, miss, you've got to put it where it'll give your guests a bang slap in the eye, if you follow me. Oh. I see. Well, the band's going to be down there. Oh, you've got to have a band, are you? Only a, a very small one. Pom, 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 pom. Laura! Excuse me, I've got to go and talk to someone on the telephone. That's all right, miss. I'm sure we can manage. Good. Hey, up, girl, what's the hurry? Oh, Meg said there was a... Hey, could you give a squeeze at my coat before the party? See if it wants pressing. I will. Oh, Laurie, I do so love parties, don't you? Rather. Laura, Kitty's waiting. Come on, Laurie. The girls can cope. We'll be late for the office. Coming. Hello, Kitty. Sadie? The 
florist, miss. Nora, tell her she's to wear that darling hat she wore last Sunday. She wants to come early to help Mother. Well, I suppose she can. There won't be much for lunch. This? Mother says you're to wear that hat you wore last Sunday. Yes, of course. If you don't mind the crusts and broken meringue shells. Do. Bye-bye. Oh, these lilies. Oh, Sadie, it can't be. Must be a mistake. Oh, yes. Is that my lilies, Laura? Yes. Are they canna lilies? Yes. Then they're the ones I ordered. But so many. Nobody ever ordered so many. But I did, darling. I said to myself, for once in my life, I shall have enough canna lilies. The garden party will be my excuse. Hans, tell Mother and Miss Laura I want them here this instant. Yes, Miss Josie. Meg, we must try how the piano sounds from here. Kate and Master sing this afternoon. You will be with the band. I might be. Oh, please, Meg. Let's try over This Life is Weary. Um, if you please, ma'am, uh, the cook says, have you got the flags for the sandwiches? The flags for the sandwiches? I think so. Um, Sadie, tell cook I'll let her have them in ten minutes. Oh, mother, you haven't. Have you? I've got the name somewhere. Behind the clock, perhaps? There. What luck. You see? Meg, go upstairs this minute and take that wet thing off your head. And Josie, run and finish dressing this instant. And Josie, pacify cook for me. I'm terrified of her this morning. Now, Laura, you must drive them out for me. Cream cheese and lemon curd. Mm -hmm. Egg and mice? Can't be mice, can it? Olive, mother. Oh, so it is. <laughs> what a horrible combination. Egg and olive. Hardly better than egg and mice. <laughs> mother. Anchovy and Chris. I've never seen such exquisite sandwiches. How many kinds did you say? Fifteen? That's right, Miss Josie. Well, cook, I congratulate you. <laughs> That'll be goblet with the cream puffs. Good morning. Take one back to all the parties one's ever had. Don't they, you, Josie? <laughs> one grows out of sweet things. I haven't. I must say, they do look beautifully light and feathery. Have one, my dears. Go on. Your ma won't know. I couldn't possibly, not so soon after breakfast. Mm. Heard about the accident in Hawk Street this morning? Oh. Horse shot at a traction engine. Bang! Dead! 
killed. Who's been killed? Thrown on the back of his head. Oh, them engines, they ought to be... A horrible accident. A man killed. Killed? Where? How? Know those little cottages below here, miss? Near our front gate? Hmm. Young chap called Scott. He's a carter. Coming down Hawk Street this morning, big traction engine appears round the corner. What does his horse do? It rears up, then bolts. Well, cart hits a bollard, smacks it flat. He's thrown out, slam, bang on the back of his head. Killed. Dead? Instantaneously, miss. He was dead when they picked him up. They were taking the body home as I came along here. He left a wife and five little ones. Oh, no. Oh, yes, miss. I, um... Josie, come here. How are we going to stop everything? Stop what? Oh, the garden party, of course. The party? Oh, my dear Laura, don't be so absurd. Well, how can we do anything of the kind? Nobody expects us to. But we can't possibly have a garden party with a man dead just outside our front gate. He's not dead just outside the front gate. Don't be so extravagant, Laura. Those cottages are in a little lane by themselves. There's a whole road between us and them. But they'll hear the band. Oh, what will the poor man's wife think? Oh, you won't bring a drunken workman back to life by being sentimental. Drunk? Who said he was drunk? Look at the marquee. I'm going straight up to tell Mother. Do, darling. Mother, a man's been killed. Not in the garden. Oh, no, no. But listen. My dear child, use your common sense. It's only by accident we've even heard of it. If someone had died there normally, and I can't really understand how they keep alive in those pokey little holes, we would still have been having our party, shouldn't we? Yes. But isn't it really terribly heartless of us? Well, no, darling, it's quite natural. But supposing one of our workmen had been killed putting up the tent? The tent would still have gone up, Laura. Such people are different, darling. But she'll hear the band. Darling. My child, the hat is yours. It's made for you. It's much too young for me. I've never seen you look such a picture. Look at yourself. But, Mother... People like that don't expect sacrifices from us, Laura. And it's very selfish of you to spoil everybody's enjoyment, as you're doing now. I don't understand. Perhaps I was being extravagant. I'll have to... Think about it after the party's over. Hello, 
Kitty. Hello, Laura. Laurie, um... My word, Laura, you do look stunning. What an absolutely topping hat. Gosh. Oh, sorry, Kitty, so is yours. But when one sister suddenly, well, you know, blossoms out, it rather takes a fellow by surprise, don't you see? She looks quite Spanish, I think. Yes, rather. Come on. Time for passion fruit ice cream. Mm -hmm. Delightful garden party. Thank you so much. Greatest success. Splendid music. <laughs> <laughs> Have a sandwich, Daddy. I made all the flags. Ah, these parties. I'm exhausted. Why will you children insist on giving parties? Oh, but it was such a success. Yes, but so. <laughs> I don't suppose you heard of the accident in Hawk Street today. Oh, my dear, we did indeed. Rather beastly it was, actually. So Laura told us. She nearly ruined the party, insisting we put it all off. Oh, Mother, please don't tease me about it. It was pretty horrible, in fact. Shepherd's married, too, leaves a wife, half a dozen kiddies, so they say. Now, begging your pardon, Mr. Sheridan. Time to haul it down. With your permission. Of course. Easy does it, mate. Steady, steady. Easy. I know. I know. We'll make up a basket. We'll send that poor creature some of this perfectly good food we have left. Laura, dear, it will be the greatest treat for the children, and she's bound to have neighbours calling. Take scraps from our party. Darling, what is the matter with you today? A few hours ago, you were insisting on us being sympathetic. Now we are being. But, Mother... Go and get the big basket out of the stairs cupboard. Well... <laughs> all right. Oh, Josie, dear, give me a napkin. Run down, just as you are, darling. No, wait. We'll send her some lilies. People of that class are so impressed by lilies. The stems will ruin her frock, Mother. Oh. So they will. Just the basket, then. And Laura, don't on any account. Yes, Mother? Nothing. Run along. Are you Mrs. 
got, please. Walk in and do, miss. It's a young lady. I'm her sister, miss. You'll excuse her, won't you? Please, don't disturb her. It's all right, dear. I'll thank the young lady. You'll excuse her, Miss, I'm sure. It's been so sudden, luck. I, 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 I... She'll be very honoured, I know, when she realises. I'll take the basket. You'd like to look at him, would you? Don't be afraid. He looks a picture. There's nothing to show. He... He looks so... so content. They're always the same once they're cleaned up and laid out. I thought... It's the peace of God, dear. Yes. Forgive my hat. It's a lovely hat. It, it was for our garden party. I must... Nora? Is that you? Laurie, yes. <laughs> oh, Laurie. Hey, you have. Mother was getting anxious. Was it all right? Yes, quite all right. I say, you're not crying, are you? No, no. You are. You were so, so beautiful. Don't cry. Was it... Was it awful down there? No. No. It was simply marvellous. Oh, Laurie. Isn't life... Isn't life so... So... Isn't it, darling? I knew you'd understand. 